It was Abigail, the beautiful and wise woman defined in the Bible, who subdued and stopped King David. The story of a beautiful and wise woman and a future king is the same as all romantic stories, but it's slightly different. First, Abigail is married. And second, David intends to kill her husband, Nabal. Why does King David finally take her as his wife? Not because of her wisdom or extraordinary beauty, but for another reason. Later, we will find out. As our story begins, David, who fled from King Shaul because he wanted to kill him, becomes a protector of the lands of the tribes living there. In this story, he was accompanied by warriors he had gathered around him to protect lands and sheep of Nabal. Due to King Shaul's weakness, the lands of Israel's tribes were looted. The tribes of Israel were separated from one another and not united, as their lands were looted, and they acted for themselves. Chapter 25 of the book of 1 Samuel tells the story of a very wealthy and wicked man named Nabal, and his wife Abigail. They lived in a settlement called Ma'an. Not far from Ma'an, there was a settlement called Carmel, where Nabal kept his flock of sheep. He celebrated with his shepherds and people, distributing to them the produce of his flocks and fields. David found out about the holiday celebration. He then ordered ten of his young men to attend Nabal's feast and ask him to give them his heart's alms from the food, which was payment to his employees for guarding. He instructed them to address Nabal in polite language, demonstrating David's recognition of Nabal's higher status than his own. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verses 4 to 6 While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you. Good health to you and your household. And good health to all that is yours. The young men in the Bible are also workers, and many times they are another name for fighters. In the current context, David sent ten warriors, whom he ordered to open the conversation with Nabal with words of blessing and polite language. David's men reminded Nabal that during the days when his flocks grazed in the Carmel area south of Mount Hebron, they had guarded his shepherds and his property against the desert robbers. They reminded him that Nabal celebrated the holiday without any sacrifices from his people or flock that could have been harmed by desert robbers, and his agricultural the produce was also unharmed. After all this happened, it was due to the protection given to him by David and his men. Moreover, they say that they did not take anything for themselves, and as proof they say. Ask your own servants and they will tell you, 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 8. And request that holiday is the day when you pay your employees, please also pay the security pay you receive from us. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 10 to 11. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water, and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers, and give it to men coming from who knows where? Nabal completely shirked his duty to reward David and his men for the protection he received, sending them away empty-handed and with the guilt that he did not recognize them. The assumption is that Nabal did not oppose David and his men out of greed, stupidity, or wickedness alone, rather, the quarrel between Nabal and David was essentially a dispute over the government and its powers. Nabal, who was strong and wealthy, asserted his right to rule in his domain and environs. Therefore, Nabal didn't like that David and his men, who came to demand payment for their protection. Nabal viewed himself as loyal to Saul's kingdom and treated David as a rebellious slave. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 10 Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. These things reflect the situation during Saul's reign. Saul was a weak king after an evil spirit attacked him, 
and he was unable to control his authority in all the borders of Israel. Nabal, who was one of the wealthiest, found satisfaction in Saul's regime, and all of David and his men's actions displeased him. One of his shepherds, who witnessed the scene, turned to Abigail and confirmed that the words they had said were true, and even added to them, saying, 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 14 to 17. David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us, and the whole time we were out in the fields near them nothing was missing. Night and day they were a wall around us the whole time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do, because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. The shepherd who warned Abigail of the consequences of Nabal's refusal did well. When David heard Nabal's answer and the way he spoke to his messengers, he ordered them to gird on their weapons go up and execute the evil scoundrel and steal all his possessions. And from his anger, he calls Nabal a dog who uses the phrase pisses against the wall. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 22 So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. However, Abigail acted quickly and foiled David's plan. She secretly loaded a large quantity of food onto donkeys and set out to meet David before he could turn her home into ruins. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 23 to 25 And Abigail saw David, and hurried and got off the donkey, and bowed down to the nose of David before her, and let the earth bow down. And prostrated at his feet, and said, I am the Lord of iniquity, and please speak your truth in your ears, and hear the words of your truth. God forbid that my Lord should set his heart against this man of blasphemy on a harp, because as his name is, he is a harp by name, and we will harp with him, and I am your truth, I have not seen the servants of my Lord whom you have sent. Abigail knew that food satisfies any hungry person. In her wisdom, it realized that Saul's regime was about to collapse, and thus the position of a villainous woman was very precarious. She asked David to please forgive her and secure her position after his victory and ascension to the kingship. She managed to convince David not to kill her husband, even after he despised him, and refused to pay him for protecting his sheep and his shepherds, and was rude to David, scolding him for being one of the slaves who rebelled against their masters. She spoke words of reason to David and brought him a tribute, thereby removing the danger that was expected for her home due to her husband's behavior. She gave a speech to David, who stood out as a smart warrior woman who pleased him, and she congratulated him on his future as governor of Israel. After accepting Abigail's claims, David retracted his intention and cancelled the sentence, and David thanked her for that. Abigail prophesied and proved that the king would not do anything that could bring down his royal house. She also prophesied and blessed him, and the soul of your enemy will be caught in a sling. David himself will be blessed because his soul will be bundled in the bundle of life, and God will be good to his people and will do to him as much as he spoke well. When Nabal sobered up from the wine, Abigail informed him of what had happened. He regretted the offering he gave to David, and he was angry with his wife. Grief and anger caused him to fall ill, and after ten days, he died. David heard that Nabal had died and sent messengers to Abigail, proposing marriage, which she humbly accepted. David didn't just marry Abigail because of her beauty, he married her to gain the superior status of her first husbands as a ruler in the area. This marriage was a crucial step in David's journey to the throne. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 41 She bowed down with her face to the ground and said, I am your servant and am ready to serve you and wash the feet of my Lord's servants. However, she does not act like a slave at all, but rather gets up and rides the donkey, taking five maidservants with her, who go before her. 
In this way, she comes to David, and he takes her as his wife. Since she went with David wherever he went, David's love for Abigail was special. After King Shaul's death, she went up with David to Hebron and gave birth to Calab, or like King David called him Daniel. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.